Good evening, my listeners. I do welcome you today to continue with our teaching that we had previously, that is teaching and preaching. And before we start uh, our teaching, I would like us to read a verse from the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verses 6, that says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being my priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus' name we do commit ourselves into your hands this evening. As long we think of your word that you have commanded us to teach and to preach, help us, Lord, as we listen to the teachings of today so that we can be helped to understand your word. Use me, Lord, to bring it in such a way that it will be a blessing to all my listeners. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As I have uh, told you again, our topic tonight is teaching and preaching. In our previous teaching on teaching and preaching, we said that when we are taught, we become educated. For teaching and preaching gives knowledge to understand the word of God and skills to apply that knowledge to attain social competence. Understand attitudes vital for everyday activities of life and growth in spirituality. Then, what is education? The word education, according to the dictionary, means act or process of educating or being educated, systematic instruction. The verb to educate points three features of the leading out. These are, number one, a point from which, two, a present process, and number three, a feature to ones which the leading out is done. The first feature shows what is already known to both the teacher and the pupils. The second feature highlights what the learner is discovering. The third feature traces to the point to ones which the leading is being done. This empowers people to go and behold what they are to become and what they are not yet, but likely to be. Now, at this point, let us look at the definition of the word education. The word education has quite a number of definitions. The common one is education is the transmission of ideas, values, and knowledge from the older generation to a younger generation. The educationists defines it as the entire process of developing human ability, potentialities, and in behavior. Other thinkers define education as preparation for life. John Dewey and the progressive education movement 
have defined education as life. To Christians, education is very intricate. It involves every feature of a personal life. Therefore, to get a holistic definition of education, it will involve the whole life of a person here on earth and the life to come. That is, the life behold this earth. This is, therefore, what is called Christian education. With the view of the above, now we can define education as interpersonal process of learning to become Christ-like and a self-reliant person in society. In this definition, we get two very, very important central terms. These are a person and Christ. A, the term a person indicates that man and woman in their self and a unique way stand for I. The uniqueness of a man stands out that he is the only being that was created in the image of God. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. B, the term Christ is uniquely in the possession of being a redeemer of the corrupted, affected, and judged community. Christ brings back people to their creator. The concept of Christ-likeness is understood when the eye is enabled to see the whole truth through education. C. The concept of self-reliance points to a person who has come to know himself or herself physically or mentally, and in addition to that, he or she has come to know himself or herself morally, socially, and emotionally. The self-awareness energizes a person to have knowledge of himself or herself and is or our potentialities. It also makes one know his or our possibilities as well as limitations in a given situation. Therefore, education has to help people to know, number one, their potential possibilities. Two, understand their limit. Three, explore manhood or humanhood. Number four, and know their power can rise above circumstances and not go below them. Number five, stop pollution of environment. Number six, to discover on how to increase food production, fight diseases, and live healthy. Seven, learn to love, protect themselves, be kind to one another, and inquire to understand and enjoy the wonderful creation of God. D, the concept of interpersonal points to the relationship between the teachers and the learners. Education is whereby 
the teachers meet the learners for the purpose of teaching and learning. Therefore, education is linked with schooling. Now, we have learned that for education to take place, there must be a teacher or teachers, a pupil or pupils, and schooling. Schooling, in another one, is teaching, and the teaching is done at a school. A school is a building or buildings where teaching is carried out. It can also be disciples, imitators, and the followers of a philosopher or an artist. In our first part of teaching and preaching, we said the first teacher was God. Now, our question here is, where is the school that God used to teach those he taught? God taught in a school called dream, revelation, spirit, and anointing. And his pupils were the children of the nation of Israel, whom he was training so that later they can be teachers and trainers of all other nations, and thus through them the other nations would know God and love God as their creator. We go now to another topic, that is the start of the first school in the world. The religious education developed among the Jewish people from the constant reminder from the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament, of the duty to teach the word of God to all people and more so to children. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. It was the duty of Levites to teach religious education, and sometimes the materials for teaching were sent direct to them from Jerusalem. This we get it from 2 Chronicles chapter 17, verses 7 through verse 9. Ezra, when he returned with some Jews from exile, he established scriptures as the basis for schooling. Traditionally, local schools in Jewish community were started by Simeon ben Sheta in 75 BC, that is the first century. He made elementary schooling compulsory, aiming to make people holy and translate religion into practice. He did not succeed, but in about 64 to 65 AD, a high priest called Joshua ben Gamala succeeded in making public elementary education compulsory in every synagogue, town, and province. If any of the three did not support education, it was excommunicated. In this way, Jews became the first people in history who made sure that compulsory universal formal schooling was done. This enabled their traditions and laws taught and preserved through, uh, throughout their history. It was only boys who were involved in this elementary education and started schooling 
when they were, uh, they were six to seven years and remained in the uh, elementary school up to the 13th year. Philosopher Sekena commented about Jewish education when he said the Jews were the only people who knew the reason for their religious observances. And Josephus, the historian, stated that our principal call is to educate our children well. Jews disciplined their children carefully, tenderly, and mildly, though firm. It is written in the Talmud, children should be punished with one hand and caressed with the two. It was during the time of Talmud that comprehensive system of education was started for all. In this same period, all rabbis upheld that the whole world was poised on the breath of the school children. The Patrak Junda one uh, formed a commission that was mandated to go throughout Palestine and make sure there were teachers for the Bible and of oral law in every place. Up to now, women were not allowed in the elementary uh, school. A teacher was allowed to teach a class of only 25 pupils. Apart from the elementary schooling, there was adult education, which was universal and was conducted in the synagogues where sabbatical teachings were taught as well as sermonic preaching instructions. Scribes were the teachers who taught in these synagogues. In addition to the teaching, scribes played the role of lawyers, interpreters, and writers. Education to a Jew is taken throughout one's life. As Rabbi Maimonides said, standing by day and night. In the Middle Ages and in Ghetto period, there was free education for all. It is during Renaissance that the Jewish people in Italy started joining universities, general education, particularly in medicine. In 1366, the Jewish people living in Sicily planned to start a university of their own. David Pronzel of Mantua in 1583 planned to start an institution that, that was fully Jewish to pre, uh, for pre, pre preparation training for Jews before entering universities. The Jews community living in ghetto in Italy had a well organized education system, a special society having a change of the Talmud Torah. It is, it is at this time that women education began and a Talmud Torah for girls was established in Rome in the 15th century. The combination of Jewish and the general education was made perfect and greatly supported Talmud Torah of the Shefand community in Amsterdam. In the 17th century, in the Jewish school, Spanish and Latin was taught 
inundation to Hebrews. The learners of the advanced class spoke only Hebrew. In Germany and East Europe, the old Jewish system of education went on and modified. It only taught understanding Talmud and the Bible was completely ignored. The immigrant Jews of West Europe and America and the elementary institutions were managed and taught by poorly unprepared teachers. In the second half of the 18th century, the Asikala writers, such as Naphtali Hetis Wesley, attacked the system. They proposed a dramatic Jewish education reform and the inclusion of the secular subjects brought a bitter conflict. Schools giving both the general and Jewish subjects were started in many countries in the half of the next generation. For example, the Jews free school started in London in 1817 and at the close of the century, it was the largest elementary school in Europe. In such institutions, general education was in control while elementary Jewish instruction was given. In 19th century, the spread of universal, universal education started to overtake the separate Jewish schools and Sunday school or Hebrew and religious classes started in most of Jewish communities to give a moderate of the Jewish instruction. The kind of instructions in the Jewish schools appeared to be elementary and ended in the age of Bamiziva. And for this reason, Gao's education was often neglected wholly. After some years, some countries started steadily to revert to Jewish day school or parochia schools. Simultaneously, bondage such as the London Bond of Jewish Religious Education, the Jewish Education Committee in New York, and the Commission of Jewish Education of the Union of American Hebrew Congregations, they worked hard to make Jewish education meaningful by providing training colleges, modern textbooks, etc., etc. When modern Hebrew was introduced into the curriculum, it gave birth to Zionism. Despite the hard work done by the Jews to provide Jewish education, it is estimated that between one and a half and two thirds of the Jewish children in the Western world, they did not at all receive Jewish education. The reason why this decline in Judaism is that the USSR and prohibited public instructions of religion since 1917. When Israel became a state in 1948, they inherited from the British mandatory period a network of Jewish schools run by Van Leumi, a governmental network of Arab schools that also served private schools, yeshivot, etc. The Jewish schools were grouped in three trades, general, 
labor and religious, which was extreme. Education is supervised by the Ministry of Education and Culture. In 1949, education was made compulsory for the children aged between five years to 13 years. In 1953, the state recognized only two types of schools, state and state religious. All other trends were abolished. Most of the extreme religious education institutions were given permission to withdraw from the, uh, from the state system, but they are still receiving uh, state support. In the state of Israel, the secondary education is not compulsory. We are now going to end our teaching here today after we have seen how the teaching that God is starting and demanding the Jewish parents to teach their children and how it is spread to all Jewish uh, people before and after Jesus Christ. To the new Israelites now who comprise the Jews and the Gentiles who have truly believed in Jesus Christ. Jesus is, com is commissioning them to teach and to preach to all nations in the world until he comes. We are doing this in obedience to this commission. Next, we will pick from this commission and see how the church current this commission. Amen. Thank you for listening to me and may God bless you. Let us pray. Thank you Lord for being with us. We know and we believe you will continue reminding us those teachings so that Lord they will be part and parcel of our lives. We will live it and live it in a holistic way that Lord will make us understand you and your work and your purpose of bringing us into this world and why you demanded education for all children and all grown-ups who are called to be your people. Help us, Lord, to study, to read, to meditate, and even, Lord, to, uh, to get all the understanding we need from all the teachings and more from your word, which will make us Christ-like, because Christ came so that we can emulate him and be like him. Help us and give us that status, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and have a good time till when we meet again for the next lesson on teaching and preaching. God bless you. Thank you.